Well, so Joe, what are we up to today? I see you've positioned my side of the table, things yep. I like, such mm -hmm. as Vargo boxes, connectors, cables, and batteries. Absolutely. A little bit different your side. Well, the good news is that some of that we're gonna be able to get rid of today, because what we're looking at in this video is we're looking at the Ardity wireless light switch. And this is a switching device that has no cables going down to the switch position, so no cable drop. And also, this device contains no batteries. Oh. No. So we've got wireless light switching with no batteries. Works on magic. Uh, <laughs> yes, let's go with that. Works on science, okay? So we're looking at some interesting technology in here. It relies on Bluetooth, and it has what's called an ocean technology in here, which is battery-free uh, technology. So we're going to have a chat about how that works a little bit later on. So this switch here that yep. has, let me just get it right, no cables mm -hmm. and no batteries, Absolutely. okay, is going to send a signal yep. to what I think is this bit of kit here. That's correct. Which is obviously a receiver, yep. which has some bits I like, which are conductors. Yeah, you've got some, got some cables there, yeah. Okay, I like that. <laughs> so it looks like from the, the image on the top that we've got a, a supply coming in, so yep. a line of neutral coming in, and yep. this goes off to our load. I think we're going to mimic it as an LED downlighter, is that true? Absolutely. Okay, and you're saying that the technology in here through Bluetooth yep. will activate the switching mechanism in yep. here and turn on the light. Absolutely. No cable going out to this switch and no battery inside that switch. We'll see. So then, Joe, we're going to be super brave. Yep. And on our first attempt of mm -hmm. powering it up live on the camera, yep. we're going to see if we can get the Bluetooth switch yep. to operate the luminaire that we've put in. Can you Absolutely. just explain what's going on in the circuit for us? Sure. So what we've done is we've taken a permanent line. We've taken our CPC and our neutral from the consumer unit. We've come through our Vargo connection box onto the wireless receiver. Okay. So that's the bit that does the, con the switching control, basically. Okay. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. And then out of the load side of that, Gaz, where have we gone from there? So in this case, we've taken it across and down to an LED downlight. Yep. How many of those LED downlighters could I install? We've only got one at the moment. So this will control up to 200 watts oh, of LED lighting wow, or compact fluorescent. When you're looking at more traditional forms of incandescent lighting, uh, you can go up to 2,000 watts of control there. But LED, looking at 200 watts, which is, when you think about it, the power rating of a typical LED lamp, that's a, a very generous amount of switching. That's really good. Yeah. So we're going to liven it up in the consumer unit, yep. and we're going to see if the switch that has no batteries and no, no batteries cables, and no cables. Yeah. will operate the lamp. Absolutely. Is there going to be any playing around before we do that process? Well, we are going to demonstrate a little bit later how we pair this up. However, according to the manufacturer's instructions, and we've genuinely never powered this up before, but according to the manufacturer's instructions, these should come out of the box prepared. Ooh. So we should just power it up and press the switch and it should operate the lamp. That will be fantastic if that's the case. So I'm getting pretty excited now, so yep. I think it's time to power it up. Let's do it. Okay then, Joe. Should we do it? Time to power it up. Let's power it up. Okay, so I've just got to operate, in this case, a six amp MCB. Oh, wow. That's Look a good that. start. It's already on, so that's good. So power's flowing through it. And we also have a blue indicator yeah. light, so it's been powered as well. Oh, fantastic. So, in theory, the switch should be prepared with this and it should turn the light off. So, let's see what happens. No way. Look at that. And we genuinely, that's straight out of the box, isn't it? We've just installed that. <laughs> We've not done any messing about with trying to get that to talk to that. It's just doing it automatically. And just to prove, there are literally no wires connected to this at all. Give it to me. Go on, There'll be some yeah. magic trick the, you're the, doing that I'm the, not aware the of. The technological man, yeah. Look at that. That's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, my word. That's really good. <laughs> that's super cool. And that's how's that, how's that talking to this? Just remind me again, Joe. So this is via Bluetooth technology. Okay. And of course, the advantage of that is there's no need for Wi-Fi. There's no need for hubs or anything like that. This just talks directly to that Bluetooth control of the lighting there, yeah? So we've got the on-side and the off-side. That's fantastic, isn't it? That is truly fantastic. And that was the first time yeah. we've done that, Joe. That's really good. Really good. So I've recovered, Joe. I had a little yeah. lay down. Got very, <laughs> very excited. down a little yeah. bit. Yeah. <laughs> very excited. However, Gaz being very sceptical, yep. we're going to have to put it through a couple more tests before okay. I'm really comfortable with it. So talk to me about your concerns then, Gaz. Well, at the moment, we've got this switch a huge distance away from the receiver. <laughs> okay, yeah. I don't believe we're going to have these two mounted as close in the real world. No, I think that's pretty unlikely. This will be up in the ceiling and this will be away on a wall somewhere, more likely. So I, I, I hear that, yeah. So we've got a short distance there. And can you just remind me what we think is going on inside this switch? So what I believe is happening here, and hopefully at some point, We'll take this apart and have a look at what's going on inside. I believe there's a device in here that is taking the kinetic energy of the switch movement. So okay. as you push the switch, 
there's a bit of movement there. And I believe it's taking that kinetic energy and it's using that to generate a very small amount of electricity, which is enough to then send a signal to the receiver. Send a signal this distance to the receiver. Absolutely. Oh, right, okay. I think at some point I'm sending you on your merry way. I'll go on a little walk, yeah. Okay, I'll stay here because I'm yeah. a little bit older. Yeah, Okay. Yeah, and we'll see how far we can get you away from me. Sure. Which will be nice. And then see if we can still operate the actual load itself and turn the lamp on. Yeah. The other concern I've got is, what if we have a power cut? Yeah. Okay. At the moment, we're not on, so let's turn it on so we can imagine we've... Okay, so yep. we're, we're in our installation and there is a power cut. We can see we've got a blue light illuminated there saying sure. that the circuit's working. Yep. In other words, we're powering the load. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a power cut, Joe. Okay, so I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's operate the RCD inside there. So there's either been a fault or a power cut. Okay, and we've lost power to the circuit. Obviously, we've lost the lamp. We've lost the indicator showing that that's in the on position. Okay. Now, I understand totally where you're coming from with this because often when we lose power to things, we've got to go through a repairing process and that can be a little bit of an awkward thing to do. You imagine if this is behind several light fittings, oh. behind ceilings, you're taking fitting down, you're repairing it, that's going to be a little bit of a problem, isn't it? So yes. let's have a little think, guys. Let's have a look and see if when we repower this up, will it actually continue to be okay. paired. So power's been off for some time. Yep. Coming. So the light was on when we depowered. It was. So let's see, see what, happens. what state it's in when we turn it on. Right, so ah. the lamp's on. Okay, so obviously it's remembered what position it's, it was in when the power went off. However, the question is, have we lost that pairing between those two devices? What let's, do you reckon? Let's give it a go. So let's give it a go. It's in conventional switching position, so we're going to be off. Turn it off. Oh, this yep. way, yeah, okay. There we go. So it's not lost its pairing when we've had the power cut. Once the power's restored, the pairing's been remembered, which, if you think about it, makes a lot of sense, because we took it out of the box pre-paired, didn't we? And so, therefore, it doesn't matter that there's not been any power onto it for a little while. Clever. So, Joe, it hasn't let us down so far, this performed Bluetooth admirably, switch. admirably. <laughs> performed admirably so far. So, we've set up around the workshop some distance points. Is that yep, true? Absolutely. We've got some cameras set up showing us a little bit further away from the rig. And we're going to see how far away we can get and if it still works. Okay, so if you go on a little jaunt, I'll continue to indeed. talk to the people outside. So we'll double check that it's working here and it's going off and it's going on. Okay. okay, so I'll go for a little wander. Okay, so hopefully we'll catch Joe up on camera in a different position. So the first point at which we're looking at is a point at five metres away. So Joe, you there? I am here, we're now five metres away. I'm just trying to make sure I don't get my microphone leads tangled up. So I will now try and operate this and see if it turns off. There it goes. Look yeah. at that. Okay, so it's off and it's on again. That's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, so should we try it a little bit further away? Yeah, if you want to carry on. Um, the next one we've set up is the meter point at 10. The reason we've chose 10 is the instructions on the box itself says that it will work comfortably indoors up to a range of 10 meters. Are you there yet, Joe? I am now approximately, I'm actually over 10 meters away now, so we've gone beyond the recommended value on the box. So, let's so see. hold your breath. Look at that, it's still going off, and it's still going on. How good is that? It's fantastic. So Joe, we've brought the camera in nice and close, because during the presentation, you said to me that we would be able to pair these mm. up, yep. maybe if we're adding another switch, or for some reason, the actual receiver yep. had lost its ability to pair to the switch. Okay. Can you go through that process for me? So what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna disconnect the pairing, okay? So I'm gonna unpair these. Uh, if I just do a long press on here, it starts flashing slowly blue. And then if I hold it down for even longer, it'll start flashing quickly blue. And what that's doing now is it's disconnecting the two devices, it's unpairing them. You can see the lamp's gone off and if I operate the switch now, you can see it's having no effect on this at all. This is still powered up, however, it's now no longer paired to the switch. And this is my worst fear, because yeah. now all of a sudden I'm you know, through the instructions, having yep. a look. I've got to now do something to get the two to communicate. And we already know, no batteries, yep. no cables in the back of this. Yep. So how easy is this going to be? Let me show you how easy it is, guys. So again, we go to the little pairing button okay. on the receiver and we hold that in and the blue LED will start flashing slowly. Okay. Yeah, if we held it in for longer, it'd start flashing quickly again, but we've got that slow flash. Okay. And now if we press the on side of the switch, one, two, three times, <sighs> it's paired. And that's it. And you can see now that that is back to operating the control of that. 
And the really clever thing is that if we wanted to set up two-way switching within a room, if we wanted one at each door okay. entering into a room or something like that, that's the same procedure we'd follow to pair up another switch. It's that simple. That is truly amazing, isn't yeah, it? I think, really clever. I think we've found very limited negatives about it. I yeah. would suggest maybe one of them. So to be fair to the uh, review that we're looking at is that maybe this would be positioned in a ceiling yeah. and maybe during an insulation resistance test. I know we've yeah. got loads that we've got to remove, but are we going to be fully aware of this device being maybe behind a downlighter? Yep, there might be something along those lines to think of. Um, hopefully you're following some reasonable precautions when you're doing insulation resistance testing. Anyway, if you're not 100% sure you've got all your loads disconnected, it's a good idea to test it on 250 at a start anyway, um, and hopefully that will show that there is something still connected in. But to me, you know, that is the way the electrical industry is going. It's just something we need to be a little bit more careful about when we're doing IRT testing. Okay, thank you. Okay then, Joe. So can we say that the wireless Bluetooth switch from RDT is a favourite of ours? We absolutely love this, don't we? I think this is a really good bit of kit. Seems really reliable, seems really functional. And the best part about it goes, what do you reckon? Well, the best part about it is a number of things. Well, we can take it off, okay, yeah. so we can go around. So we've got that coolness at dinner parties where the switch will come away. <laughs> and, and be on the table yeah, next to you. Absolutely. Yeah, like that. I like the fact there's no batteries in it. Yeah. I like the fact there's no cables to it. Yeah. And I like the fact it's actually Bluetooth. Why would yeah. that be? Well, because it's Bluetooth, it means we don't have any other system to rely on. We don't have to worry about the Wi-Fi dropping out. We don't have to worry about a hub not connecting, any of that stuff. It's just simple and I think that's what makes it really really great and that's simple both from the technology aspect for the the end user to use yep. but also the electrician that yep. wasn't very difficult no, either was it to connect up no really easy so I think this is a, a bit of a winning bit of kit really